What's up, guys? This is Webby back again for your SmackDown Live review. We are fresh off of the Super Showdown. We are on our way to Evolution and Crown Jewel. And who was in the main event? Well, well, it's the Big Slow. You've got to be kidding me, WWE. Seriously, you put the big show in the main event of 2018 on our way to crown jewel on our way to what is becoming wrestlemania in november and you put the big show in the main event of SmackDown. Now, if he was on TV next week, I could understand that because he had played a big part in SmackDown over the years. But on a regular episode of SmackDown, uh, I'm sorry. Th th this is this was just cringe. And quite frankly, if you had them here, had him on the show to try to enhance Randy Orton's hillishic, devilistic, uh, uh, viper character. You did a bad job. I I'm going to tell you that. You can't use the excuse that uh, it's this World Cup uh, 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 thing that's going on in Saudi Arabia when uh, you get the crown jewel. You can't use that as an excuse. The big show, main event of SmackDown Live. I have nothing else to say about that. Thank you, Randy Orton, for winning this main event on SmackDown tonight. Before I get any further, you all know what to do. Subscribe, hit the bell, leave a comment, like, share, do everything else. It'd be much appreciated. And also, follow me on Facebook and Twitter at 2007Webby. A lot of fun and hard work goes into all three of these for you fans out there. So join me on my journey on all three of those media websites for all the excitement. Now, SmackDown tonight. I tell you. <sighs> Outside of the main event, I really don't have anything to really gripe about. Not not a whole lot. The main event kind of made me cringe, but I've never been a big fan of uh, the big show. We opened up the show with something a little bit different. It's been a long time uh, uh, since we opened up the show with uh, a matchup. Not saying I want to see a, a wrestling match open up the show every single week. But it is nice to see something different. Back and forth would be nice. Sometimes have a segment open up the show. Sometimes have a wrestling match open up the show. Back and forth. Monday Night Raw, it's very formulaic. Segment, 30 minutes. Match, 5 minutes. Another segment, another segment that's talking all throughout the show. Nice to see something different. And start off with the women's championship matchup might intrigue some people some people might find it boring depending on what style of a uh, wrestling uh, 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 fan you are in any case this rivalry Charlotte and Becky Lynch has been one of the more uh, intriguing rivalries Smackdown has been offering to its wrestling fans and come evolution, another first, first time ever, last woman standing between Charlotte and Becky Lynch. It's not, 
it's nice seeing somebody else in that spotlight. Honestly, it really is. You know, we always saw either Bailey and Sasha or Charlotte and Sasha or Alexa doing first time ever or, or everybody on Raw doing first time ever, things of that nature. Nice seeing Becky Lynch getting one of these first time evers in the WWE, in my estimation. Because uh, uh, up until this point, she's really been overlooked by the company. She's been put on the back burner. And she's really getting her uh, a good push here as of late. And it's well-deserved in, in my uh, uh, standards. And I'm sure in everybody else's as well. But tonight, they had the okay matchup. And uh, they went through... The uh, 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 barrier up on top where they come out. So that was kind of cool to see. But um, they overdid it. I'm just going to say that. After they went through the Titan Tron, them saying that they had to be taken out on ambulances and, and medical attention and all that stuff, please, WWE, please. You can do so much better than that, than feed us that. Whatever the case. Evolution, those two women should knock our socks off with a good contest for that event. Jeff Hardy and Samoa Joe. Now, a couple of different ways you can look at this, okay? Now, when they announced this match, I thought, to shoe in. Samoa Joe is going to get his consolation prize for laying down to AJ Styles three times and losing. Him winning this and going on to the World Cup would be that consolation prize. Whether he would win it or not, that would remain to be seen. He loses. Still showing the injury to the leg and to the knee and that. Now, Jeff Hardy picking up the victory because Samoa Joe can't continue. Makes more sense now because Randy Orton beat the big show. Rivalry renewed on SmackDown once they get to Saudi Arabia. That's what that's about. However, give me a break about Samoa Joe. If they are just playing up the storyline from Saturday when he got his leg hurt going through the table... Why? Why? Samoa Joe is worth so much more than what you're doing with him. It is so sad how you are wasting away Samoa Joe. I tell you what. Next week, Rey Mysterio is facing Shinsuke Nakamura. The winner goes to the World Cup. There's not a doubt in my mind Rey Mysterio is going to the World Cup. Once that happens and the World Cup is over, 
One of two things need to happen. I don't care if it's two heels facing each other. A good rivalry, Samoa Joe, Shinsuke Nakamura. I don't care if it's two heels. You all let me know if you would want to see that rivalry on SmackDown Live. That would be intriguing. That would be some classic matches for us to watch, in my estimation. Now, if that does not happen, Samoa Joe and Rey Mysterio, good rivalry. Make that Rey Mysterio's first one back. Yes, I know I'm mentioning something that Rey Mysterio would beat Samoa Joe and Samoa Joe would uh, uh, end up getting buried again. But it would make for an intriguing storyline on the way to the pay-per-view, whichever one they would have it at. So, I could see some uh, intrigue. With that, you all let me know in the comments below what you think about those two rivalries on SmackDown. One thing that we saw tonight that really makes me not want to go to Milwaukee is... That it's lame in Milwaukee. <sighs> Forget about having this great glorious night in Milwaukee. Ain't English proved that it's lame in Milwaukee. That's all that segment uh, uh, showed. If they were supposed to show us that it was a great glorious happy night in Milwaukee... I don't know what in the world they were doing because that well, that segment of Rusev, Aiden, and Lana Day was just cringeworthy. When I told you all that WWE would take these three characters and crush them and bury them, I meant it, and that's exactly what they are doing with these three characters. Uh, I understand this is the, uh, PG era or, or whatever you want to call it era, but for them to hype up this special night in Milwaukee and then it to come off as Aiden English just getting burned and turned down by Lana. And that's it. WWE. You can do better than that. Over on Monday Night Raw, you had... And so, and, 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 and uh, Rusev and Jinder Mahal and Big Cass have this big, huge, uh, 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 I, I don't want to say uh, 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 a sex rivalry, but I mean, uh, that's what it kind of seemed like. I mean, it was a big, some huge uh, 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 porno rivalry going on. Where, I mean, uh, Lana and Enzo was uh, 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 in a bedroom, you know, getting dirty, and, and uh, Rusev got all involved in it and interrupted Enzo and, and beat Enzo up and all different types of stuff. And you come to SmackDown, and you had Lana stop Aiden cold in his tracks. So, yeah. Give me a break here. I mean, I'm not saying you have to go to extreme here, but I'm saying that was kind of lame. A 
AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan. Now, if there's one thing that we all, every wrestling fan is in agreement with, it's the fact that at Crown Jewel, these two guys are going to put on, if WWE lets them, the best match on the show. If they don't handcuff them, hold them back like they did Nakamura and AJ Styles, Samoa Joe and AJ Styles in their first matchups, both of them, both rivalries, they're going to have a great contest at Crown Jewel. In the end, the Miz will interfere. There, there, there is no doubt in my mind the Miz is interfering in this matchup. Tonight, perfect example on why the seeds planted, why them teasing, making fun of the Miz. But, I'm ready to see it. Every wrestling fan, I do believe, is ready to see it. AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan will put on a classic. But in the end, the reign will continue for AJ Styles. And it's simple. Survivor Series. If they have SmackDown versus Raw, any who's best to face Roman Reigns, because Roman Reigns is walking out of Crown Jewel the champ. That is AJ Styles, because Daniel Bryan has other stuff to worry about. The Miz. And everybody's already talking, talking about it. CM Punk's record. WWE already counting the days until he breaks that record. They've already keep they've already started to name counting down all the days AJ Styles have been holding on to that championship. Wouldn't surprise me a bit if he broke CM Punk's record by the end of his title reign. Would you all let me know what you're thinking about everything on SmackDown tonight? And don't forget to go watch Monday Night Raw Review. We discuss Shawn Michaels and the Undertaker's uh, a big, huge DX and, and Brothers of Destruction matchup at Crown Jewel. Nikki Bella turning heel, plus so much more was discussed on Monday Night Raw Review. Don't forget to go back and check out my review of Super Showdown, which is live on the channel as well. Plus, subscribe. That would be much appreciated. Amongst everything else I mentioned at the beginning of this podcast. And just to let you know that my top five greatest SmackDown Live characters of all time list will come up on Thursday. So Thursday, tune in for that. That would be much appreciated. But until I see you then, this is Webby, and I'll catch you on the other side. Talk to you later.